Apnea Wikipedia article audio Apnea or apnea is suspension of breathing. During apnea, there is no movement of the muscles of inhalation, and the volume of the lungs initially remains unchanged. Depending on how blocked the airways are, there may or may not be a flow of gas between the lungs and the environment, gas exchange within the lungs and cellular respiration is not affected. Voluntarily doing this is called holding one's breath. Apnea can be involuntarily achieved, drug-induced, mechanically induced, or it can occur as a consequence of neurological disease or trauma. During sleep in patients who are suffering from sleep apnea, these events can occur up to 20-30 times per hour, every night. Cause Complications Apnea can also be observed during periods of heightened emotion, such as during crying or accompanied by the Valsalva maneuver when a person laughs. Voluntary apnea can be achieved by closing the vocal cords, simultaneously keeping the mouth closed and blocking the nasal vestibule, or constantly activating expiratory muscles. Under normal conditions, humans cannot store much oxygen in the body. Prolonged apnea leads to severe lack of oxygen in the blood circulation. Permanent brain damage can occur after as little as three minutes and death will inevitably ensue after a few more minutes unless ventilation is restored. However, under special circumstances such as hypothermia, hyperbaric oxygenation, apneic oxygenation, or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, much longer periods of apnea may be tolerated without severe consequences. Untrained humans cannot sustain voluntary apnea for more than one or two minutes. The reason for the time limit of voluntary apnea is that the rate of breathing and the volume of each breath are tightly regulated to maintain constant values of CO2 tension and pH of the blood. In apnea, CO2 is not removed through the lungs and accumulates in the blood. The consequent rise in CO2 tension and drop in pH result in stimulation of the respiratory center in the brain which eventually cannot be overcome voluntarily. When a person is immersed in water, physiological changes due to the mammalian diving reflex enable somewhat longer tolerance of apnea even in untrained persons. Tolerance can in addition be trained. The ancient technique of free diving requires breath holding, and world-class free divers can hold their breath underwater up to depths of 214 meters and for more than 4 minutes. Apneists, in this context, are people who can hold their breath for a long time. Hyperventilation Voluntary hyperventilation before beginning voluntary apnea is commonly believed to allow the person involved to safely hold their breath for a longer period. In reality, it will give the impression that one does not need to breathe, while the body is actually experiencing a blood oxygen level that would normally, and indirectly, invoke a strong dyspnea. Some have incorrectly attributed the effect of hyperventilation to increased oxygen in the blood, not realizing that it is actually due to a decrease in CO2 in the blood and lungs. Blood leaving the lungs is normally fully saturated with oxygen, so hyperventilation of normal air cannot increase the amount of oxygen available. Lowering the CO2 concentration increases the pH of the blood thus increasing the time before the respiratory center becomes stimulated, as described above. While hyperventilation will yield slightly longer breath holding times, any small time increases at the expense of possible hypoxia. One using this method can suddenly lose consciousness a shallow water blackout as a result. If a person loses consciousness underwater, there is considerable danger that they will drown. 
An alert diving partner would be in the best position to rescue such a person. Static apnea blackout occurs at the surface when a motionless diver holds a breath long enough for the circulating oxygen to fall below that required for the brain to maintain consciousness. It involves no pressure changes in the body and is usually performed to enhance breath hold time. It should never be practiced alone, but under strict safety protocols with a safety beside the diver. Because the exchange of gases between the blood and airspace of the lungs is independent of the movement of gas to and from the lungs, enough oxygen can be delivered to the circulation even if a person is apneic. With the onset of apnea, low pressure develops in the airspace of the lungs, because more oxygen is absorbed than CO2 is released. With the airways closed or obstructed, this will lead to a gradual collapse of the lungs. However, if the airways are open, any gas supplied to the upper airways will follow the pressure gradient and flow into the lungs to replace the oxygen consumed. If pure oxygen is supplied, this process will serve to replenish the oxygen stored in the lungs. The uptake of oxygen into the blood will then remain at the usual level and the normal functioning of the organs will not be affected. A detriment to this hyperoxygenation is possible nitrogen washout occurring which can lead to absorption atelectasis. Apneic oxygenation However, no CO2 is removed during apnea. The partial pressure of CO2 in the airspace of the lungs will quickly equilibrate with that of the blood. As the blood is loaded with CO2 from the metabolism, more and more CO2 will accumulate and eventually displace oxygen and other gases from the airspace. CO2 will also accumulate in the tissues of the body, resulting in respiratory acidosis. Under ideal conditions, Apneic oxygenation could theoretically be sufficient to provide enough oxygen for survival of more than one hour's duration in a healthy adult. However, accumulation of carbon dioxide would remain the limiting factor. Apneic oxygenation is more than a physiologic curiosity. It can be employed to provide a sufficient amount of oxygen in thoracic surgery when apnea cannot be avoided and during manipulations of the airways such as bronchoscopy, intubation, and surgery of the upper airways. However, because of the limitations described above, apneic oxygenation is inferior to extracorporeal circulation using a heart-lung machine and is therefore used only in emergencies and for short procedures. Use of PEEP valves is also an accepted alternative. 5 cm H2O in average weight patients and 10 cm H2O significantly improved lung and chest wall compliance in morbidly obese patients. Apnea Scientific Studies In 1959, Fruman described the use of apneic oxygenation during anesthesia and surgery. Of the eight test subjects in this landmark study, the highest recorded PACO2 was 250 mm of mercury, and the lowest arterial pH was 6.72 after 53 minutes of apnea. Apnea Test in Determining Brain Death Studies found spleen volume is reduced during short breath hold apnea in healthy adults. Etymology and Pronunciation a recommended practice for the clinical diagnosis of brain death formulated by the American Academy of Neurology hinges on the conjunction of three diagnostic criteria, coma, absence of brainstem reflexes, and apnea. The apnea test follows a delineated protocol. The word apnea uses combining forms of A plus nea, from Greek Greek, pi nu omicron iota alpha, from dash, privative, pi nu epsilon iota nu, to breathe. See pronunciation information at dyspnea.